We've already learned how to use Octave to perform basic arithmetic calculations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponentiation. In this video, we'll expand our use of Octave to include Octave's built-in functions. Octave has thousands of built-in functions. These include the trigonometric, logarithmic, and exponential functions that you're likely already familiar with, but those are just the tip of the iceberg. This video will emphasize the general use of Octave's functions, rather than trying to provide a list of the functions available in Octave. The best way to obtain an exhaustive list of Octave's functions is from Octave's documentation. Before we introduce the functions available in Octave, let's review mathematical functions in general. As an example of a mathematical function, consider f of x is equal to x squared plus 3 times x plus 1. The function has a name, f. The function's argument is x. It appears in parentheses after the function name. This is in symbolic form since it isn't defined for a specific value of x. However, we can use the symbolic function to determine the value at any arbitrary value of x. For example, to evaluate f for x equals 2, just substitute 2 for x, perform the arithmetic, and get f of 2 is equal to 11. The output of the function when x is equal to 2 is 11. We can think of a function as something that maps or transforms one number into another. It's kind of like a black box that takes an input and transforms it into an output. Octave functions are analogous to mathematical functions in that they transform or map an input argument into an output argument. However, they don't provide the symbolic relationship between the input and the output that the mathematical function does. They take numbers as input arguments and return numbers as output arguments. The output numbers correspond to the values of the function for the corresponding input argument values. For example, the sine of a number can be calculated using Octave's SIN function. The function name is SIN. The input argument is listed in parentheses after the function name, exactly as with our mathematical functions. The main difference so far is that the input argument, the variable x in this example, needs to be defined as a number before our Octave function can use it. The SIN function returns a number corresponding to the sign of the input argument. This number gets assigned to an output variable name, which is y in our example. So in summary, the input argument, a number, is sent to our function, and the function returns an output argument, another number, which gets assigned to a variable name. The argument sent to a function is always a number. We can put the number directly within the parentheses if we want to. For example, we can determine the sine of 2 by typing sine, open parentheses, 2, close parentheses, at the command prompt. By the way, the argument to the sine function must be in radians. It's probably more common to define the argument as a variable. For example, if we define a variable angle equals pi over 2, we can then use that variable as an argument to the sine function. var1 equals sine of angle. The sine function calculates the sine of pi over 2 and returns a number. The number is assigned to the variable var1. The argument to a function can be in the form of a calculation. Let's calculate the sine of pi divided by 4 and assign it to the variable var2. So var2 equals sine of pi over 4. The argument has to be a number. Octave performs the calculations necessary to create a number before sending the argument to the function. Many octave functions have more than one input or output arguments. We'll talk about multiple arguments in the context of converting a point from Cartesian to polar coordinates. The octave function to do this is cart to pole. 
Just to review, a point in two-dimensional space can be represented in several ways. One form is Cartesian coordinates, which correspond to our usual x, y axes. The distances from the origin in the x and the y directions are represented as a pair of numbers. In our example, the point P is A units in the x direction and B units in the y direction. Alternately, we can represent the point P in polar coordinates by its radial distance from the origin, which is the Greek letter rho in this example, and the angular distance of the point from the positive x-axis, represented by the Greek letter theta on this figure. We can convert between the Cartesian coordinates, AB, and the polar coordinates, rho theta, with octaves cart to pole command. The cart to pull command accepts as inputs the values a and b in that order and returns the values theta and rho in that order. Keep the order of the arguments in mind. It's important. Let's look at the cart to pull syntax in a little more detail. All octave functions have a name. This function's name is cart to pull. The input arguments are provided in parentheses after the function name. The output arguments are listed on the left of the assignment operator. There are a few details about the syntax that you should note. The input and output variables are provided in list form. The arguments are separated by commas. The output arguments are enclosed in square brackets. If there's only one output argument, the square brackets are optional. But if you want to put brackets around a single output argument, it won't hurt anything. Importantly, keep in mind that the arguments are set according to their order in the list regardless of their variable names. The first argument in the input argument list will be interpreted by the function as the x-axis coordinate and the second as the y-axis coordinate regardless of the name of the variables. Likewise, the first argument in the output argument list is the angular position and the second argument is the radial position no matter what the variable names are. Now let's do a couple of simple examples with the cart to pull function to illustrate the use of functions that have multiple arguments. In our first example, let's convert the Cartesian coordinates 3, 0 to polar coordinates. The point is 3 units from the origin, so we'd expect rho to be 3. Since the point is on the x-axis, we'd expect theta to be 0. We can use the octave command theta comma rho is equal to cart to pull of 3 comma 0 to perform the conversion. Notice that the x coordinate 3 is the first in the list and the y coordinate 0 is second in this list. For our second example, let's convert the Cartesian coordinates 0, 3 to polar coordinates. The point is again 3 units from the origin, so we'd expect rho to be 3. Since the point's on the y-axis, we'd expect theta to be 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. The cart to pull command returns angles in radians. We can use the octave command theta comma rho equals cart to pull of 0 comma 3 to perform this conversion. Notice that the x-coordinate is first in the input list and the y-coordinate is still second. Now let's take a look at how Octave performs these functions and what the effect of changing the variable names is. First, I'll just type the command as it was on the previous slide. So open square bracket, theta, comma, rho, close the square brackets, an assignment operator, then cart to pole of 3, comma, 0. This returns theta equals 0 and rho equals 3, as we expected. Let's modify this a little bit, though, and type rho comma theta equals cart to pole of 3 comma 0. Now theta equals 3 and rho equals 0. The radial distance is returned as the first variable in the output argument list, which is now called theta. The second variable is the angular distance, which just happens to be the variable named rho. 
Obviously, this can get confusing, so it's a good idea to give your variables meaningful names that reflect the values that they're assigned to. This time, let's assign our values to variables and use variables in our input argument list. Let's set the x distance to 0 by typing x underscore dist equals 0, and the y distance by typing y underscore dist equals 3. Now let's type open square bracket angle comma rad underscore dist close square brackets equals cart to pole of x underscore dist comma y underscore dist and follow our command with a semicolon. Now the calculation is done, but the semicolon suppresses display of the results. To see the angular distance, type angle and press enter. The angle is pi divided by 2, which is what we'd expect. Typing rad underscore dist and pressing enter shows the radial distance is 3, also as we'd expect. The names of most octave functions are pretty intuitive. In fact, in many cases, you can probably guess the appropriate function name and how it works. However, it's always a good idea to check the help files to make sure you're using the function correctly. Next, let's look at a couple of examples at this point. Octave has a predefined variable, e, that corresponds to 2.7183 and so on. The character e is also used to denote exponential notation. So 5 times 10 to the third is defined by typing 5e3 at the command prompt. Octave's exp function also calculates exponentials. To find e squared, type exp of 2. As another example, to perform a base 10 logarithm, I would probably guess that the function is log. However, if I type log of 10, I don't get 1, which is the base 10 log of 10. Let's use the help function to figure out what's going on. The log function is performing a natural logarithm. Let's scroll down to the bottom of the help topic for a list of similar functions. Log 10 looks like a pretty good candidate. Now let's retry the previous calculation. Typing log 10 of 10 returns 1, as it should. In our videos so far, we've learned how to perform arithmetic operations and use octaves built-in functions. Essentially, we're now able to use Octave as a very powerful version of a handheld calculator. However, this approach doesn't take advantage of Octave's full capabilities. Our next topic will be script files. Script files allow us to program Octave to perform a series of computations in a batch without outside interaction from the user. This approach is far more efficient than typing commands at the command window.